नमस्ते ओके देन लेट्स स्टार्ट द फर्स्ट थिंग इज दैट यू नो गुड मॉर्निंग एंड हाउ आर यू फाइन थैंक यू yeah yeah it's been a, it's been a long time and in between there's been a gap and you know which which i do apologize for but um, let's get on to it uh, yeah. can you can you uh, update us on what 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 kind of activities and and progress you've had since the last time we spoke okay thank you so much uh, since the last time we had a, a, a call with you again so far there's a lot of things which have been happening uh, within us and uh, we have been continuing with our rehabilitation of the hand pumps within schools and facilities and communities where we are serving we have also done two more schools where we did rainwater harvesting uh, in schools uh, in nakuru county and then also we added three more that's of the church a church in marengo county and three more schools that's churo girls uh, murten primary school and churo day where we where the partner who had uh, wanted us to go and do that rainwater harvesting within the schools. So we had a meeting with the, with the school management to at least uh, get water from now the community borehole where we did pipe work all the way to the schools, to all the three schools, and we did the rainwater harvesting in a church. So, and then also we have done survey in Narok County where we wanted to do some work in a place called Loita, where even we, we got a, a a young mom or a young family who were doing who was fetching water and i really felt touched in in an unprotected uh, spring of our well which was very very which to me is not something which should be happening so that's something we are going to do a survey there so at least you can see we can uh, get a, a partner or a donor we can at least do a bow for that company so that's so far what we have done at the moment and we are still looking for like like minded organizations so people to come and come together work together in this wash pits aspect in schools and facilities and communities where we are serving them. so there is a lot of um, people who are calling upon us to at least go and help them in this uh, in their communities but also the the the, the, the funding bit is also a bit challenge for us because now we cannot go from one place to another because of funding yeah so thank you so much No that's that's exactly what I was going to be asking you is you know you you're doing all these projects but where is the funding coming from We have um, we have some few people we have been working together in uh, to together who are sponsoring our projects uh, we have like uh, Kingdom Peaks International who have been helping us in projects in Bodingo County we have Wine to Water who have been helping us uh, with the fine finances for the rainwater harvesting in also some schools we we have some few uh, partners who who are like minded to like us so that we can come together work together we we provide a, we, when we have a challenge we we reach to them that we have this challenge is there a way you can at least uh, give us some finances to at least make those uh, projects to be a success of so, course and we are willing for more yeah the, the other the other question was um Now are most of these organizations that fund you are they religious based organizations Yes like for the one which has been funding us in Baringo County it's a religious uh, based organizations mm-hmm. yes and even the, the founder is called Jaim Baraka Barak who has been helping us a lot in this in this term. what they do actually in Baringo initially they started first building churches but with time they saw so there was a problem of water issue so that I when they called us our organization to at least go and do water what water water issues within the schools and even the churches because right now we have done some churches with rainwater harvesting we we put gutters put the tank base and everything so that these people can I mean have water with them which is reliable of course that is fantastic that is fantastic no the, the... it's a small it's a small initiative but it's, we call it baby steps because now people will have water rather than of course. And, and, of course. and sources which are now good no i think the 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 idea of, of getting support from missionaries and missionary organizations is is yeah. something that is very traditional and uh, i think they are the ones who who actually give back to the community yes Uh, the other thing was that you know where do you get your volunteers from and then you know like you you're you're putting up 
where you're doing almost technical work by putting up uh, drainage systems and things like that, you know, and, and, you know, water harvesting systems. So where do you get these volunteers from? And then where do you, how do you train them? We want, we normally have uh, volunteers who normally work with us. Like now when we have a project, like let's say a donor or a partner has come to at least come together, we want to do some projects. Is when now we involve these this, this volunteers who at least we pay something small, not, not a big thing, like I mean, because they are volunteering, because some have just uh, finished their, their, their education and they wanted to at least explore in the water sector, uh, especially the engineers, the plant part. So we call them and then we tell them, we have a, this, 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 this work in Baringo or this, or this, this place. Are you interested? And when they are interested, you know, now we can deploy them, they can go and do the work. But also, I'm on the field. So let's make sure that everything is done according to what, our, what we are given to it, our promises to our donors. So it's, we have more voluntary work because of also the finances. Uh, but if we get finances where we can at least employ uh, our staff in full time uh, pay, that would be something which we are also looking into. Yeah. But for now, have uh, that need to at least help our people in the communities to access clean, reliable water within their community. Because even sometimes when you go to a school, you see a smile from a child or people. It's something giving us, I mean, it satisfies my heart that if, if a child can smile and, and he or she will not be carrying uh, water every morning with jerry cans to school, that is something. You see animals drink, have, uh, drinking water. I mean, which is something which to me is satisfying. It's not about monetary, but the service to humanity. That is something I can just say. Of course, of course. And that is the primary reason. Um, and now if, if uh, you know, a lot of the time, most, most organizations do not uh, even talk about the average amount of funding required to do uh, a general, say uh, water harvesting like the, like you put the the drainage systems in a church and all that stuff so what 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 would be the average investment that somebody needs to, that an organization or or a donor would need to make to you to conduct a water harvesting system thank you for for rainwater harvesting in our school you know like first we do surveys in various schools yeah. Because if they don't have a box, we, we put we, we 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 try to at least put for them rainwater harvesting in that school. And we do the pipe work and all the digging and everything. Yeah. yeah. So for an average for about uh, maybe a school to have a rainwater harvesting depending on the capacity of the tank and also the rooftop of the school, the classes or the rooms available, we also do surveys. So I can't really say because now once we have done the survey. Is when now we can know the amount of uh, amount of money which should be uh, 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 accumulated for that that project because that yeah. is just give up land and it will not be giving a, a, a good thing because now you can find in a school like which we had gone they only have around six classrooms so you see you cannot put like uh, maybe twenty thousand liters of uh, water down. so it depends on the schools and also the, the survey we do is when now we can advise and that mm. we can do all that. Uh, thematic areas, and then we give them to our partners or willing person who will willing to work with us. Of course, uh, have you have you made some kind of assessment of of the these schools and the churches around uh, and you know the the community halls? Uh, what what kind of average estimates would be required to invest in water harvesting systems? Okay, for a uh, rainwater harvesting in a school, it costs around four hundred thousand Kenya shillings to around us. 700,000 shillings, depending on the, the location, because now there's also issues to do with the uh, logistical issues, transporting to one from, from the supplier to the site. There's also issues to do with the, I mean, as I said, the rooftop, you have to check out the rooftop and the pipe works which you have to be used. So between 400,000 to around 700,000, and at maximum, 1 million shillings. Yep. Yeah. And we have done surveys in various schools. In Baringo County, we have done surveys in about 10 schools. Nakuru County, we have done around 30 schools. Naro County, we have just recently done about uh, four schools and two communities where they need water. So, and uh, you know, when we go to use those surveys, we put them in our record so that at least when we find a partner or a donor who is willing to at least work with us in the journey, 
is when now we can give maybe the, the, the correct figures and how we are going to at least do that. Of course. Of course. And then the do you how how often do you submit proposals to to clients? I mean to, to donors. Yes, we normally supply we submit proposals to to our donors or partners. But uh, sometimes we get a regret because when I've gotten two regrets of them, but we don't use those. Of course, you know, everything is not like Rome was not built in one day. So, but uh, we are still hopeful that one day we will get funds and I mean, keep things rolling. We are, we are hopeful and we are also looking upon uh, the people who will at least one day see, because our work out there is feasible, is something seen, it is not something on paper. Because when I was telling somebody else, uh, another organization, you can come and I like, take you to our one of the project areas where we have done, because our our work speaks for itself. Yeah, so yeah. We normally we normally submit our proposals. Sometimes we get rejection. Sometimes we get. Uh, I mean, uh, 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 sometimes we get that we are, there are still something uh, discussions still escalated to a higher level, and some have promised that maybe next year from January or February maybe we can keep our work going. No, no, of course. I I was very impressed with the uh, with the photographs and the visuals that you've put on uh, on uh, LinkedIn. Sure, I think thank you. that um, very impressive, and and that's a lot of work, a lot of work done. And real congratulations to all of you. Um, thank you I, for that compliments, and uh, we are we are doing all uh, all we can to at least with this, with the little resources we have, we make sure that we do everything as according to what we have told our partners or our donors. And that's why we are calling upon any partner or any donor who is listening to me. Our doors are open. Just come. It's not necessarily monetary. You can give us also ideas of how better ways we can work in the water aspects, uh, water aspect in schools, help us in the community. Because there's a lot of calls. Even recently, there is another organization who uh, they called me. They wanted me to at least uh, manage all their albums, which they have installed countrywide. But I told them, if you have the finances to at least put down this, uh, these hand pumps, do you have the finances to at least make sure that the sustainability bill? Because most of the organization, at least, they are not uh, factoring in the issue of sustainability bill. And our, our aim is to at least sustain these projects for about 10 to 15 years. So at least it can keep. And then also we are training uh, the, the, the water users to at least be maintaining them. That's one. Number two, also, we have been also training men, but we have recently come to understand that men, when they get a job, they go. So we are now training now women within that community because it's not very easy for them to at least leave their communities and go. Mm -hmm. So something which we have now started doing and training them. So we are doing what is called OJT, on-job training to them. So at least we can make sure that they are they know up to the task and they see what we have been doing so that in case if there's something to be replaced in that community, we can send them if they can't replace with the one of our technicians can go there depending on the finance. Yeah, no, no, excellent. I think it's a very, very excellent plan. Yep. Now, uh, I mean, you've, you've, we've, you've, you've told us what you've been doing. You've told us the the kind of uh, impact that you've received from uh, from the work that has been implemented. Uh, now, can you can you tell us what what other organizations, uh, whether international or local, are working in your work area that are doing yes, they are. doing a similar job? Yeah, there are those organizations who they are doing similar jobs in special areas where we are working in. Yeah, there are some who have also been trying to at least do also rain water harvesting within within the schools which they have been called upon. And uh, I mean, I'm impressed because we, we are not jealous about what they are doing, but also it's for us to at least learn from them what they have done successfully, exchanging notes to at least know that this is where they did well, this is where we, maybe we did wrong. So at least we can come together. Sometimes even we, we meet in the stakeholders forums where we at least synergize together. So at least it can be a learning for us. And then also another thing is that the only thing which sometimes these organizations, they are sometimes focused on one central point rather than being uh, distributed equally. So, but, uh, you know, it depends also with, the, with them and their scope of uh, areas and their future, yeah. which we cannot at least maybe I mean, advise them. But it's, they are doing tremendous work within the communities. And then also another thing which we have also uh, maybe brought on board is about hygiene administrations in schools. 
for them to realize that uh, the girl child is something we should be focused on. And uh, actually, when we started at, uh, repairing this handbook to the school, the girl child actually uh, started, I mean, those who are missing school, they have started coming to school instead of now because they have. So now we're trying to at least give them maybe sanitary pad so that at least they can stay in the school. So one sanitary pad for girls to stay in school. So something also we're supposed to look into. Excellent, excellent, yeah. Now, uh, finally, what, what do you... Uh... What do you recommend to organizations that are working in the water sector in your area? Um, what I would recommend to uh, the organization who are working in the water sector in, in my region is that it comes up to what you're doing. Let's, let's all come together, work for the common good for that beneficiary to have clean, uh, reliable water source within their community, the communities where we are serving. Because now when we have water within the communities, we will have less diseases, we have uh, uh, less uh, pupils or students who will be missing classes because of water issues. They'll be hand washing, they'll be able to wash their hands, they'll be having water to drink, they'll be having a lot of, I mean, concentrating in their studies rather than now thinking of bringing water to school with jerry cans every morning, every afternoon. So it's something which I think I'm, I emulate and I, I, I congratulate them and I'm telling them, let's work together and make sure that we reach 2 million people to have, to have access to clean the global water within the schools, health facilities, and community areas. No, you're, you're, you're mentioning, you're mentioning uh, I mean, quite often, you well, a few times you've mentioned that uh, you'd like everybody to work together. Uh, do, you, do you feel that there is uh, a distance between organizations that uh, are working towards, uh, you know, water sustainability. Okay, of course there are some maybe maybe some gaps which maybe if we just uh, put our strings together, we will at least come together because working together as a team or as an organization, we will achieve rather than everybody doing their own things and then maybe they are not achieving. Uh, you know, this being having envious about others and what we are doing. I mean, we should maybe come together at least we. We come together, have a common goal, work together for the common good of our communities or beneficiary areas. Yeah, no, true. Yeah, yeah. Is there anything else that you would like to add at the as, uh, towards the end of our? Um, maybe my happiness is that uh, I'm, I think I'm, uh, uh, I'm, I'm humbled to at least uh, serving this community, and uh, it's my pleasure that. Uh, I will be reaching to more, more, more beneficiaries, depending on the finances we get. And as I said again, uh, I'm calling upon all the like-minded people and organizations who are ready to work with us. Our doors are open. You're welcome. We can at least uh, synergize together, work together for the common good of communities we serve. So I'm available, and may God bless you. And for those donors who have been working with us this journey. May God bless them. May, may they get more funds so that at least they can at least uh, uh, give us more money so that we can at least do the, what we can do within the community. Of course. Of course. Thank you. Thank you very much, Daniel Brett. Hi. You've just been introduced to Daniel Brett. He is. Um, um, basically a volunteer who's working in the uh, water and sanitation uh, area of, of development and uh, is working in Kenya. Now, uh, Daniel and I have, have interacted on various occasions and the latest one is uh, the, the small short discussion that we had today about uh, his work. And if you are the touchy and feely kind of person and loves to evidence things through sight and touch, um, then I think Daniel has a lot to offer. The work that he and his, his colleagues have done in a small part of, of Kenya shows how effective a simple thing like taking water 
making it available to school children and people who go to church and uh, and, and communities in communities through through organizing hand pumps just simple hand pumps simple machines has improved and impacted the lives of so many people and at at a very low cost now my appeal is to to really give his his organization of thought and if you can try to support the work he's doing he is one among the millions and billions on this earth who are trying to actually do something and the results are there for everyone to see thanks